Let's talk fallen angels. The Watchers, the 200 angels that God sent down to watch over mankind and keep us safe, who descended upon Mount Hermon and ultimately committing unforgivable sins against God and betraying him by teaching man things that we were never supposed to know. Some of the things that these angels taught man include the tracking of stars, astronomy, astrology, the signs and paths of the moon, and divination. They also taught man the cutting of roots, medicinal magic, and about plants. One of the angels was responsible for teaching man metallurgy, the art of working with metals, creating swords, daggers, shields, and breastplates, everything crucial and necessary for war. They taught him how to make ornaments and jewelry and bracelets, and the art of beautifying the eyelids. Yep, makeup. Other things they taught man were a whole lot darker. As they taught man the art of enchantments, the casting and breaking of spells, the art of combat. And these angels actually taught man the procedure of how to unalive a fetus in the womb. Mm -hmm. They also taught man about anatomy and how to write with pen and paper. All things that God had taught them that man was never meant to know. But here's my favorite part, the book of Enoch, chapter 16. God tells Enoch, go back to the watchers and tell them this. You have been in heaven, but all of the mysteries have not yet been revealed to you. And you, you worthless ones. And these in the hardness of your hearts who have made known to the women, and through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. God for the mic drop. Of course God wouldn't teach them anything but worthless mysteries. But the fallen angels' teachings of these things to men were by far the smallest of their sins against God. When, not long after arriving on Mount Hermon, these angels found themselves quickly enamored and infatuated with the beauty of mortal women. And together, these angels devised a plan. A plan to take these women as wives and to lay with them. But the lead angel, he was no fool. Worried that the other angels might back out last minute, fearing that at that point he would bear the full consequences of crimes against God, he requested that all of the angels at that point would make an oath. An oath that they would all take women as wives and lay with them. And as they did, it formed an unholy offspring of children. The giants. The Nephilim. These giants began devouring all of man's sustainable natural resources. Once they got tired of that, they began devouring man. And once they grew weary of that, the giants, they began devouring one another. And God knowing that if these giants weren't stopped, it would be the imminent demise of man, had to do something to wipe this entire planet free of the giants. Hence, the Genesis Flood. But many believe that the Genesis Flood did not do the trick, and that somehow the Nephilim did survive beyond the Genesis Flood. The spies that Moses dispatched to scout the land of Canaan reported this. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came of the giant. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. God knew that he would have to punish these angels and make them an example in front of man for the unforgivable sins that they had committed against God, all of them chained and imprisoned, four of which he imprisoned beneath the great Euphrates River, where they will remain for 70 generations until the day they are released to kill one-third of mankind.